Andy Friedman is joining me. He is the co-founder of Miles for Migrants. Uh, it's an amazing group. Uh, Andy, welcome uh, to the program. Thanks for having me. Uh, good to have you. All right, so first, for those uh, that don't know, what does Miles for Migrants do? Uh, Miles for Migrants is an organization um, that was incorporated in the fall of 2016. Uh, our mission is pretty simple. Um, we're all about reuniting families. Um, and how we do that is by taking donations uh, for frequent flyer miles, um, credit card points, and cash, and using those donations to uh, cover the cost of airfare um, in cases of legal reunification, uh, mainly for refugees um, and immigrants across the world. So I'm surprised Trump hasn't tweeted about you guys yet. Um, these are the guys shipping in the immigrants, <laughs> etc. But so in in all seriousness, let's talk about who does it apply to most? Who do you guys fly? Yeah, yeah so historically, um, since we founded about two years ago, we've been very focused on international, um, on the international refugee crisis. Um, in 2016 alone, there were 66 million people across the world that were displaced from their homes. Um, and if you think about it on a global perspective, there's 50 million children. Um, who are who are impacted by this crisis. So our mission has been one about helping whoever we can. How we do that is we've been able to find amazing partners, uh, mainly refugee organ aid organizations um, who identify cases and we insert ourselves at the place where they are legally granted asylum um, or a visa status to move to a new country. Um, all they need is a flight. Um, often those flights can be thousands of dollars. Um, and where we see the opportunity is through our donor base um, uh, credit card points and miles that they've been collecting, um, often sitting on a shelf, uh, can be used in something that would have put that family um, in financial debt and unable to be um, economic contributors to their new their new economy. So it's not just the U.S., right? It's uh, across the world. Yeah, totally. And so uh, prior to a few weeks ago, um, when we came on the radar in the U.S. stage, um, our mission had been. Primarily focused on the U.S., um, not intentionally. Um, we're a U.S.-based organization. Um, the founding team all lives here. We're all Americans. Um, it's been more of a challenge to find um, aid organizations locally uh, who were able to identify the cases where we could support, um, where we were finding partners in Europe uh, primarily who could more easily identify people we could help. Um, when things started happening with the family separations in the U.S., we, we really couldn't ignore wanting to be involved. Um, and then thanks to a tweet that honestly just went viral, um, having nothing to do with our, our own organization, um, we benefited from that over the last three weeks um, to the tune of 37 million miles have been donated to our organization um, in that period of time. In just the last how many weeks? Uh, three weeks. Wow, how many have yeah. been donated before? Um, prior to that, we were sitting on about three million um, in donated miles, which is which is not nothing, um, but uh, that is the true definition of of something with just sparking. Um, and I think we attribute that really to uh, what's underlying our movement, um, and it's the idea that people are looking to make an impact. Um, in this case, people see uh, families being torn apart at a border, and they want to do something, anything. Um, so when uh, Beth uh, Walensky, uh, a University of Michigan law professor, tweeted about her experience donating miles to help reunite a family, uh, I think it just struck a chord um, with people honestly across the world who have been donating to us over the last few weeks. Man, just a random professor in Michigan tweeted about it and then it took off like that? Yeah, and someone we don't even know. Um, we're now social media friends, um, which is great, but uh, it, uh -huh. it did, and, and I think uh, it was like something about 150,000 times and retweeted, you know, thousands and thousands of times, and 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 we're just thankful um, that we now have, yeah, the ability. And so, so just to kind of put that in terms of what we can do, um, so that gives us the ability to uh, fly at least um, uh, 1,850 people. Um, one of the the real challenges we have is like miles and credit card points. Um, are one part of the side, but if, if you or any of your viewers have ever, ever booked um, a flight on Delta using SkyMiles, um, you're asked to pay uh, taxes and fees at the end of that. Um, so with these types of numbers, um, we, we do have kind of financial needs as well. Um, so that's something where we're, we're looking to get support for, um, but we're really excited about you know bringing this opportunity to our partners and, and honestly reuniting um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of families. So you need people to donate their miles, but you also need uh, money to be able to pay the taxes and fees. Yeah, just to kind of, you know, last time you booked a flight, you were probably asked at the end to, to pay the, the $10 yeah. to $100 in taxes and fees. So on our average, it's about $50 per ticket. Um, so with those types of numbers, we're closing at about $100,000 that we're gonna need to, to put against the flights that we need to book.
Andy, did I see right that there's that you're all volunteers? Is that right? Yes, you are. Uh, you are catching me um, after uh, my day job and my evening job of putting my three year old and one year old down, and and now it's back to Miles for Migrants. So right after I finish with you here, uh, we have a board call later tonight. So um, the other. Uh, interesting thing about us as a group is uh, we we've only met in person once. Um, so uh, Seth, uh, one of the co-founders, um, lives in New Orleans. Um, Nick, uh, another co-founder, uh, lives in New Jersey, and, and Ryan, the fourth original co-founder, is also in uh, Louisiana in Baton Rouge. And and it's amazing that that we found each other on the internet. Um, kind of all came together over the shared vision of this being an opportunity, um, and that's how we started. And uh, I want to talk about uh, one person in particular. Then I want to come back and talk about the kids who were separated at the border. Sure. Uh, so recently, uh, Tarek Al Suleiman uh, wrote a, a piece uh, talking about how you guys helped him. So yeah. um, he was from Aleppo, Syria, and he was 13 years old when when he basically ran from there, uh, ran for his life in essence. And uh, he happened to go to uh, Belgium. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So we have um, an amazing partner in Belgium, a Caritas International, um, who was able to bring us this case. Um, in Tarek's cases, like many of the stories we hear, um, and that's honestly why we do it. Um, you know, if you were to to talk to any one of the founders of this organization, why we why we spend our nights and weekends, um, kind of putting in the effort, it's to wake up the next morning after we booked a flight um, and get a text um, with a picture. Uh, of that moment of someone um, like Tarek is being reunited with his family. Um, often these are cases where um, a father has been separated from um, their wife and children for years. Um, there's been several cases where that father uh, left a pregnant wife um, and has not even met the child. Um, so fast forward three, four years later, um, that's the first time they're meeting. And, and it's, it's pretty incredible uh, to be a part of that moment of reunification. So in that case, uh, uh, what really uh, got me was that um, he needed to bring his family back once they actually won permission from Belgium to bring them That's in. That's right. And uh, he had come uh, with his uncle. Uh, you know, they barely made it to Belgium in the first place, uh, and uh, and he was worried not, not only because he's 13 and hadn't seen his parents and his family all that time, and that was already. Um, you know, heartbreaking in a lot of ways, and it took a nine-month process once he got to Belgium. Let alone how long it took to get to Belgium. But most importantly, they're in Syria. They could die any day, especially in Aleppo, any which day. is an absolute right. war zone. Uh, it's that's yeah. not a you know an analogy. That's literal. It's a it's a war zone. Yeah. They could, and yeah. so every day is a heart attack on whether your parents are going to die and your family's going to die. And so, the fact that you guys could get them over uh, as Right away, instead of them having to try to somehow raise money to, right. to fly them over, and then at the end he thanked um, one of the people who was involved, mm -hmm. Kevin Ma. So how yeah. does that work? That is, yeah. how does he know Kevin's the one who gave the miles for his family and maybe saved their lives? Yeah, that's uh, it's one of the, the the beautiful things about kind of the way we have to do this um, now. We would love a world where all of the airlines um, were able to allow us access to uh, pool and collect um, uh, donations from lots of different people and users on the back end. Uh, for the major airlines, United, Delta, American, primarily, um, that's not the way it works today. Um, what that does provide is an opportunity like you just described with Kevin, um, where the donor is actually pledging the miles to support a specific family. Um, so in Kevin's case, he was intimately involved um, in booking um, the flight for Tarek's family. Um, and that creates a really intimate bond. Um, most cases, not all, um, uh, involve after the reunification, um, a letter uh, being written from the family specifically to the person uh, who donated the miles um, that allowed them to fly. Um, and that's a relationship that that can last years, um, and and obviously is is really emotional. And and unlike um, you know uh, being able to give uh, money to an organization that you don't always know where it goes. Um, in our case, uh, you know exactly the person um, that you're helping, uh, and I think that's that has something to do with the fact that you know 37 million miles were donated to us in such a short amount of time. Is is people see that as a as a meaningful way to make impact um, and know exactly where it's going? Yeah, I mean. Um to just donate your miles and know that you might have saved the family's life, uh, that's amazing. I wanna make yeah. sure everybody's got the website before we do anything else, milesformigrants.org. That's the, the number four, milesformigrants.org. And 
Obviously, donate milesformigrants.org slash donate. Uh, please, please participate. And then uh, I wanna go back to the family separated at the border. I, sure. I literally don't know if this applies to you guys, so that's why I'm asking. So yeah. I, I know that there were, uh, unfortunately, hundreds of cases where they separated the kids, then they deported the family members and yeah. forgot that the kids were left behind. So yeah. could that apply whether flying the, uh, the parents back up or flying the kids to the parents uh, in this case or no? Yeah, um, there are every case is a little bit different. Um, so, you know, what has happened is there's been amazing organizations that have stepped up um, and helped support many of the families that were separated. Um, uh, Ray Seas, who raised um, uh, about $20 million in Facebook donations, has been involved in that. Um, the ACLU has been fighting the fight. Um, Forward.us has been very involved. So, incredible organizations have been helping. Um, and to your point, what's left is some of these these more challenging cases. Um, where a family has been deported or a parent is still in a detention center and their child is somewhere else. Um, and once they get bond, they have to fly immediately. Um, we are being pulled into some of those organizations. Um, we're working with a number of partners who are on the ground, um, basically taking the intake when these families get out um, and bringing those cases to us to, to help support. Um, we are well aware um, that much of the uh, attention we've received over the last few weeks and many of the donations um, were intended for that purpose, um, for helping to kind of help the families here in the U.S. that have been separated, and we're working our hardest to do that. Um, so far, it's been a handful of cases that we've been able to support um, with partner organizations, um, including Immigrant Families Together um, and many others. Uh, but, but we continue to do that work. And actually, um, you know, later this evening, we'll be speaking about a couple cases that just came to us uh, that do involve families where um, a parent's been deported um, and the child's still here. And, and how do we get the child back um, um, to the country where their parents now are? Um, with the chaperone, what have you, uh, to make that reunification happening. So, so that's the work that we're doing and trying to put all these new miles to use. All right, uh, Andy Friedman, uh, milesformigrants.org. Thank you so much for joining us, really appreciate it. Thank you for having us, really appreciate it.